for tuning into my channel. Uh, today, I actually want to cover something that I missed out on the last video. Now, if you guys remember in that last video, we were talking about red flags and pain. Now, the part that I missed out was actually specific to low back pain. Now, there is a red flag and there is a condition uh, tied to the low back that um, is a serious condition. And we're going to be covering that today. So let's get started. So the thing that I want to cover today is known as cauda equina syndrome. Now, cauda equina basically means the horse's tail. And in a second, we'll know why that's called that. But um, this is actually an injury and not a disease. Um, it's caused by a lumbar disc herniation. Um, what, actually, a lower lumbar disc herniation because the higher ones actually affect the... Uh, that's where the cord is. The lower one, there's no cord. And I'll show you that right now. So, I have this app, Essential Anatomy 5. Now... Here, I know this just looks like a crazy, scary comic book villain, but uh, just bear with me here. So what I did was I took out all of the um, tissue, all the muscle, skin, everything. Uh, the only thing that I left was the nervous system, so the nerves are still here. And as well, I also kept the, uh, the skeleton, but only the axial skeleton, which basically means the central part of the skeleton that houses the brain and the spinal cord. So we're gonna take a look at um, what we're talking about here. So I'm just gonna turn them around. And I'm just gonna zoom in all the way here. So let's start at the top. So we can see that we have the brain here, right? The, the lobes of the brain. And we're gonna zoom in a little bit more. So we have the spinal cord right there. And so this is the neck up at the top. And then here, with where the ribs are, this is the mid back. I also took out the vertebrae in that area so you can see where it goes. And here, we're getting into the low back. And if I click on this one, you see that's the lumbar vertebrae two. So I took out the first one already because um, we can actually see what's going on behind that first vertebrae. So I'm gonna zoom in again. Now remember, this is the spinal cord, right? So that's the spinal cord. So I'm gonna flip this guy around and you can see that the spinal cord kind of ends. Let's see if I can get this to disappear. There we go. The spinal cord kind of ends where the first lumbar vertebrae is. and in its place, if we turn this around, you see that we get these these nerves, this whole bundle of nerves. And this actually resembles a horse's tail. It's basically what it looks like. If I hide all of the other lumbar vertebrae, you see how it goes just straight down all the way here. Kind of like how a horse's tail looks. So that's basically what it is. The uh, spinal cord itself terminates at the beginning of the lumbar spine, which is the low back. And in its place, we get these bundles of nerves that basically do everything that the spinal cord would do. So let's go back to our notes. So as we saw here, lumbar disc herniation causes the cauda equina syndrome. Uh, regarding disc herniations, I will do a separate video just on disc herniations in the future. But um, as for today, let's just know that uh, a disc herniation is basically a disc is, um, the gel inside the disc is now outside of that disc due to either injury or micro trauma as we remember from our previous videos and now it's compressing on the cauda equina so this itself is a medical emergency it needs to be treated as soon as possible because there could be some serious issues later on uh, the hallmark symptoms that um, basically um, tell the practitioner or whoever is dealing with this that um, this is cauda equina syndrome there's a few of them so there's bowel and bladder issues. That's probably the, the dead giveaway. So there's urinary incontinence. Basically what that means is uh, you're not able to control your bladder. It kind of just leaks and goes and you don't even know about it. And if you do, you can't control it. That's what incontinence means. Uh, urinary retention is kind of like the opposite. It's like you can't empty your bladder completely. You always feel like there's something left and you can't get rid of it. Now saddle paresthesia, basically what paresthesia means is uh, pins and needles, numbness and tingling, uh, wherever that is. And saddle paresthesia basically just means, say if you're sitting on a horse, the areas of your body that are in contact with the saddle, um, that's what this is talking about. Saddle paresthesia is those areas such as your groin, genitals, the inner thighs and all that. Um, it's feeling pins and needles, getting a little bit of numbness. So that's what this is talking about. And the last one here is a loss of sexual function. Uh, you're unable to get aroused and um, basically the genitals don't work properly anymore. So if this is left untreated, um, you could have permanent urinary incontinence retention, 
saddle paresthesia, and loss of sexual function. Basically, all of these hallmark symptoms that uh, someone could experience uh, if it's not treated as soon as possible, like within 24 to 48 hours, it could lead to permanent um, issues with these four symptoms. Now, the only real treatment as of now is surgical decompression. What they're going to do is they're going to find that area of uh, herniation where the compression is happening, and they're going to kind of cut away the, um, basically the, the vertebrae. So then there's more room for that, um, for the spinal cord to actually breathe and do what it needs to do. So I hope that was uh, fairly easy to understand. It's a very quick video. Um, basically something I just missed in that previous video. Uh, but I still think it's very important that everyone out there that is dealing with low back pain should know this in the extremely rare occasion or event that this does happen. Um, I think this is actually even more rare than 3% diseases. So. Uh, like I said, most of you watching this video most likely do not have this. And even for us practitioners out there, um, we rarely see this. Most of us go through our entire careers without ever seeing a cauda equina syndrome. So rest assured that it's extremely, extremely rare. So if you guys have any questions, again, feel free to leave them down in the comments section below. And uh, if you liked the video, don't forget to hit that like button, click subscribe and turn on notifications. And until next time, stay happy, stay healthy, and stay alive. Oh, 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 oh,